Hello, wonderful viewers, and welcome to Flavors of Africa, Canada's first African cooking talk show. Welcome. Merry Christmas. I'm your host, Doris Ufwebune. Christmas is a beautiful time. I love Christmas. I will say that Christmas is one of my best uh, uh, celebrations because I get to eat my favorite food. You know, I get to indulge. So Christmas is all about storytelling. And I always remember beautiful Christmases that I had with my family. And the very Christmas that I had here in Canada that was so special, memorable, was the Christmas that I had in Winnipeg with my family. Okay, speaking of Winnipeg, Winnipeg has been voted one of the most livable cities in Canada. And it's one of the best, or rather, the best city to raise children. So I am so happy that my children grew up in Winnipeg. So I was working at Eaton's in cosmetics. And I did my best. And this is the reason why I say to my children, friends, people that know me, Anything you do, give it your best. So I did a great job for Eaton's, uh, Eaton's when I was working there in cosmetics. So one day, my manager took me to HR. And you know, when your manager says, let's go to see the HR, you know what it means. And I, of course, I was doing a great job, so I didn't worry. But it turned out that the company that I was representing was not doing very well. Even though I was number one in the whole region, it didn't matter because other people weren't doing their best. So, you know how they start with the best stories, uh, how you've done very well. You know, you are one of the best employees. I knew, I said, so what's the bad news? They told me that my job was ending. And it was around Christmas. All I could think of was my children. What am I going to do? I had a list of everything that I was going to buy, the food, you name it, clothes. I wasn't sure what to do. And I was just, you know, talking to myself, thinking, what was I going to do? What was I going to do? So when the manager finished uh, with her speech, she said to me, Doris, I said, yes. She said, well, as you know, you were number one. I said, okay. And she said, for that reason, we are going to pay you for five months while you stay at home collecting the money because you've done so well. I said, what? I will stay at home? and I will get paid? She said, yes, because you did a fantastic job. Your company and Ethan's, we're going to make it happen. So they, you know, it was a collective effort. And then they said, guess what? I said, what? They say, well, we're going to, you're, you're going to continue with your 20% discount. I said, what is the problem? So it's almost like the job ended, but it didn't end. And at the end, I will receive my severance pay. I was so happy, you know, it started like, you know, Doris, I mean, your job was ending, but it turned out to be the best Christmas ever. We celebrated in style. And guess what? We had an organization called the Umona Ibo Cultural Association of Manitoba. Mm. Winnipeg was, it was, it really was the best city for me. I enjoy every city that I live in, you know. So that year, because I was so happy and I've mastered my lasagna, and I was going to show off my lasagna because you see, I, I never ate lasagna until a friend invited us. And so I said, well, it would be better to share with children because you know, children, they are very picky when it comes to food. So I made a big batch of lasagna with beef, with mozzarella, Parmesan cheese, you name it, up to five cheeses. And off I went. 
and I brought my lasagna with all the spices and I placed it on the in the center of the table and children they were eating the lasagna they could not stop eating I was so happy it became one of the dishes that every time we had a potluck they would ask me to bring the lasagna so when we were moving away from Winnipeg the children weren't happy they said who is going to be the lasagna lady <laughs> I thought that was so interesting but we connected we connect we connected with adults we connected with children and this is what Christmas is all about connecting with loved ones you know building memories you, you, you have the old memories, you continue to make new memories. And that's what life is all about. And I always say to myself that it doesn't matter what's happening in our lives. Like right now, I mean, most people have been watching my tweets. Um, now uh, that's uh, X. So it's interesting that is life. You know, I always say that God will never give you something that you will not be able to handle. So whatever happens to me in my life, especially during this Christmas, because everything started December 1st, as I told you, wonderful viewers, for those of you that have been following Kevin and I, it's life. Life happens. And what you have to do is to embrace it and see how you can be better and how you can use your experience to help other people and this is the reason why i tweet and say hey wonderful viewers wonderful people this is what is happening to me this is christmas season but it's not gonna change me because i know that i am the master of my own fate so wonderful viewers I'm going to continue a little bit with the Christmas story. I'm going to take you back to Nigeria and tell you some stories about my Christmas ce celebration with my mom, with her sisters and cousins and everyone and how they empowered each other during Christmas. So wonderful viewers, stay tuned. Hello wonderful viewers, welcome back to Flavors of Africa, continuing with our Christmas stories. Now I'm going to take you back to where it all started, my mother's living room. <laughs> so Christmas is, is, a, is a beautiful time in Nigeria, just like anywhere. During uh, Christmas, that's when my mother's family members the sisters, the cousins, they will all come to her house because, you know, maintaining the tradition. My mother was the second child the, or the second daughter of Ashidu. <laughs> yeah, the names are all over. <laughs> so anyway, so they use Christmas Day to empower women. They, you know, they never called it uh, women empowerment. But looking back, that was exactly what those women were doing helping one another so they will recap the year's uh, activities what they did for the past few months you know leading to christmas and then they will talk about how they are going to continue with their business going forward and then they will look at all the young women the younger women younger than the older ones and just to measure their success what they have done and then where they needed a lift, a push, they will, you know, help them. So my mother was one of those people that people would come to her house and they will, you know, bring their clothes. They call it like kante cloth, just like Ghanaian cloth. Very heavy, very expensive. Why were they doing that? They're doing it because most people, you know, education was so important in Nigeria and it still is. So some people were not able to go to school. So they will bring their cloth and they will ask my mother to, you know, um, lend them some money. So she would do that and they will give her the cloth so that when they had money, they would go back to pay. But most of the time they wouldn't have the money to pay. So, but most of the time my mother would just give it back to them. And 
sometimes too they will bring goats just to compensate for that to say thank you we could we didn't have money but we're going to pay you with a goat and stuff like that so those people too they will all come they will sit in the living room they will be talking about tomorrow that's the following year what they were going to do how they will continue to empower their children and it resonated with me so this is the reason why we say that in Africa it takes a village to raise a child when an African woman sees another African woman, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter where you, whether you're in Canada, we still do it. You take that child as your own child. You treat that child as your own child. So this is the reason why, because in Africa we believe in karma. Whether it's Christmas we talk about it, they say, no, don't do evil to other people's children. This is the story I've learned growing up. They say never treat other people's children disdainfully respect them love them like your own so that you will continue to be blessed and so over the years like every year they will uh, reconnect again and most of the young women that were not doing very well at the beginning you will see them climbing most of them were able to send their children to school this is how we connected in africa this is how we connected during christmas about helping one another and then the food I can't forget the food and then they will cook up a goosey soup they will cook up jollof rice sometimes it will be rice rice and stew goat goat meat I really enjoyed my childhood and I'm, I thank God for that because you know so when things go haywire I just go back <laughs> to my childhood and I say thank you God and it's a big lesson so you do the best you can in life so this is what christmas is all about for me remembering those beautiful stories when i'm watching the album and looking at old pictures it's so sentimental for me i, I don't know what to tell you so this is the reason why i continue to say to my friends or my friends we discuss we say yes let's continue to do the right thing let's continue to um, promote the spirit of togetherness, the spirit of camaraderie, the spirit of knowing that when you help one African child, you help that child to rise up so that that child can help another child. So, wonderful viewers, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to start cooking. Have I told you what I'm making yet? So I'm gonna come back and I will tell you wonderful viewers. Thank you and stay tuned. Welcome back wonderful viewers. It's Christmas, I'm so excited. So I'm going to make rice infused with coconut milk curried goat meat to go with the rice we have mac and cheese and fried chicken as well as chi fried chicken wings with a dip plus brussels sprouts and coleslaw so that's what i'm making for you wonderful viewers so let's get cooking
Welcome back, wonderful viewers. As you can see, we've made tantalizing dishes for you. We have our chicken wings, fried chicken wings with the dip. We have the curried goat to go with our rice here. The rice is infused with coconut milk and then we have mac and cheese. Mm, this is so good. And to go with our fried chicken, we have the Brussels sprout, we have the coleslaw, we have the uh, uh, chin chin biscuits, remembering Nigeria, and then our delicious orange cake. So, wonderful viewers, Merry Christmas again. We've come to the end of our show and remember that food is culture and that cultures that eat together stay together. Through food, we can continue to appreciate diversity and promote cultural unity. Until next time, wonderful viewers.